Hi, I'm Linda Salter. Today I'm going to show you how to take a normal glass door um, or any piece of glass and turn it into a beautiful piece of artwork for under $20. If you see something new that you haven't learned before, please like my page and um, please subscribe. I have lots of different art projects, everything working from mosaics to paint to tile and um, I will be posting them. Here are some of the products that you're going to need to do your project. I always wear gloves when working with the faux stained glass because it tends to be pretty messy. I have a couple straight edges here and measuring devices, some painter's tape, white and clear craft glue, a container to store your glue upside down in when you're using it so you can help eliminate bubbles. I have a Sharpie painter's marker here. You may want to use that, or you can just make it up as you go along. This is my favorite tool that I use to help keep my lines really straight and clean. Some Q-tips, some toothpicks, lots of different colors, definitely some glass cleaner. I love using these styrofoam egg crate cartons to mix my paint in. Keeps it really neat and organized. A big container for water. I have a long board here. If you have a large project, you're going to want a long board to help you draw your lines. Lots and lots of rags, several different paint brushes, um, little craft brushes. My favorite two that I used, one was just a little tiny, tiny craft brush and the other one has the, the corner, you know, it's a square tip so you can get right into the corners of your, your art project. So. That's about it. Here I have this beautiful glass antique door that was given to me. And it will go in a very rustic camp. So we'll see how this works out. So the first thing we need to do here is we're gonna clean the glass. And each one of these areas just needs to be wiped down and cleaned really well. I'm not going to bore you with that. Before I started painting on the actual door, I drew a very rough sketch of what the door looked like. And then I started drawing in some lines, sketching out different angles that I thought might look nice. Next I just copied my pattern that I had drawn up here down to the bottom. And then I drew a similar two lines down and then two lines across. And then I started just filling it in. Um, to see what my pattern was going to come out like. And once you start working with a medium, you may change your mind. You may decide that it would be easier to do different lines, and that's okay. I changed my mind a lot when I was doing this, this door. When mixing the paint and the glue for the lead line, pour the glue into another container, add your paint, mix it up, pour it back into the bottle, and then store it upside down overnight to help eliminate air bubbles. When you're making the paint for your stained glass portion of the art project, if you don't have the particular color that you want, mix your paints together first. And then what you want to do is add the clear glue to the already mixed paint. And that way you'll get a better effect. I've made a little sample of different um, ways that I did and I worked with the glue and the paint just to show you basically what not to do. So this one here on the bottom, pretty heavy amount of glue, and I spread it out evenly and then just let dry. As you can see, there's all kinds of air bubbles popping up through, so I would need to go through that with a toothpick and pop those. The center piece here was just plain paint. There was no glue added to it. And I wanted to show the different variations on, I painted one big square in the beginning, and then I went over it and I painted the bottom one here using the brush strokes going an opposite direction, and the top one, the brush strokes went the same direction. And then on the top, I just took one swipe of some pretty heavy glue, and you can see how I didn't spread it out evenly. This little guy over here, I masking taped it off, or um, paint taped it off. And while it was still very wet, I pulled the paint tape off. 
And then I use my little razor blade to sharpen up the edges. And I really like that one. You can still see some air bubbles. But when you put it up to the light, let's hold it back the way we had it, you can see what's happened. The very top one, all the paint rushed to the edge. The middle one, which was just paint, you can really see the brush strokes, but they're minimized and they look more like stained glass when you're going in the same direction. This one is the best where I use the paint, painter's tape. And down here on the bottom, it's still running a little bit because it's still wet, all kinds of air bubbles, but good coverage. So as you can see, what you should do is practice a little bit before you get started so that you know how the medium is gonna work. Next, I just took some blue tape, some blue painter's tape. You could use masking tape to do this. I'm just using it as a guide. Um, where I have such really long runs, I wanna make sure that my lines are all straight. It's really hard to do a really long line straight. So I measured that at three inches. I would just flip it over to this side. So I have my measuring device down there. And down now, placing this right on my ruler at three inches again. That gives me a nice straight line all the way down. So I'm checking the paint. It's still pretty wet. The glue is taking a while to dry because I put a lot on there. But I'm pulling it up and it's giving a pretty straight line. You can see where it looped out there a little bit. Taking your razor blade and pulling the glue towards your line, you can scoop it up and then you can fill in any little voids you have with a little paintbrush, just dabbing it. So I ripped the tape off the second side and I realized I needed, I let it dry too much and it really took too much of the paint glue off. So I'm gonna retape this line and um, add some more and just take it off a little bit sooner. And then you just have to watch it with your razor blade and just keep pulling it in while it's still able to be removed. My first line came out really nice though. I love that one. Using my guide, I am making my cross sections corner to corner. And then when you're done and it's dried, just border your entire section with the glue. So I'm nearing the end of my project. I've gotten most of my lines done. I have to do a few more in the center. But one trick I wanted to talk about is when I have a long line to draw, now that I have a lot of the glue on here, I don't want to put the tape on to draw the lines, um, if I'm even using that at all. So what I've done is I just want a long straight edge via the board, and say I wanted to make a line from that point to that point, I would just set my board up on top of the wood, and then you want to set your board just a little bit inside that corner piece, and then you can squeeze it gently and run your line like that. I'm not gonna add one right there, right yet, um, because I want this line, I just did this line over here, and I want you to, that to dry just a little bit before I do my next line. From here, I just continue to fill in my lines using my guide. The great thing about this medium is if you draw a line and you don't like it, you can easily remove it immediately with your razor blade. one of the project is now completed. I have all my lines drawn. Now it's time to mix some paint and have some fun. So for the stained glass portion of this, you want to add your clear craft glue, then the color paint that you want. Gently stir and then let it sit for a few minutes. You'll find that all the air bubbles will come to the top. You can pop them then and it just makes it a little bit easier um, and incorporates fewer bubbles into your project. You can start applying the paint. I found that the best result came when I added a really thick layer of the paint glue 
to the individual sections versus painting several different lighter layers. I tried both. This turquoise triangle here, I applied a very thick layer and I really like the way it came out. Several times I added a color to one of the sections and I thought it was a little bit bright. So while the glue was still wet, I added a darker color on top of it and then gently blended it just a little bit. Gave it a little bit more realistic stained glass look. Here you have the final product of my faux stained glass door, completed for under $20. Please like this tutorial and subscribe to my channel. I will be posting many more um, art projects with several different types of medium. Thank you.